and welcome to Truth in the Streets. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman, and we meet here every Sunday, live on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am so glad that you're joining us today, and I just pray that our service today will draw you closer to the Lord, that you will hear everything that He wants to say to you, and that this will be just a, a time for you to fellowship with Him and renew your mind and learn more about Jesus. We have an amazing service planned for you today. We're going to be looking at Joshua, particularly Joshua 3, as the Israelites are getting ready to leave the desert where they have been wandering for 40 years, and now we're going to cross over into the Promised Land and take in all of the promises that the Lord has uh, given them. But to do that, they have to go across the Jordan River. So we're going to unpack that scripture today, uh, learn more about what they went through and how God worked, and I, I pray that it will be a blessing to you. Before we get started, we are just going to spend a few minutes in worship and uh, soak in everything that the Lord wants to do and say to us. So let's get started. Let's worship the Lord. Your name, 
Let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to discuss your word. And I just pray that you will open our hearts and our ears for everything that it is that you want to say to us, that we will remember your promises, that we will stand on your solid foundation of truth, which is your word, and that it will equip us, Lord, as we step out into the waters of life. I just pray for each person listening and watching right now, Lord, and I just pray that you will have your way. We love you and we praise you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The reason why I'm really excited about today's sermon and talking about Joshua and the Jordan River was that I had an opportunity to actually get into the Jordan River back in 2016. God made a way for me to go to Israel and walk the text. And so I had an opportunity to move throughout um, Israel and Jerusalem and visit all the places where Jesus had walked. And it really made the Gospels come to life for me. One day we made our way to the Jordan River. Now the Jordan River, as you can see on this map right here, is 156 miles long in the Middle East that flows roughly north to south through the Sea of Galilee and onto the Dead Sea. Now this river is so significant in Judaism and Christianity because the Bible tells us that the Israelites crossed it to go over into the Promised Land and that Jesus was actually baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Now, this is a picture of me sitting beside the river. We literally got into the river, all of us as a group, whoever felt comfortable and whoever wanted just to kind of get into the river. So you can imagine that here's this whole group of probably, I don't know, 25, 30 people stepping into this river and, and finding our footing and kind of just sitting down. And, and we let the waters wash over us and, and just spent this time with the Lord. And it was really a time to surrender our past, uh, claim God's promises for our future, and it was a moment that I will never forget as long as I live. We actually had a man who was um, probably in his late 50s that decided he was ready at that time and so he was actually baptized um, in the river and so it was a very very special moment for all of us and by the picture you can see that I'm just I'm just kind of soaking it all in my eyes are closed I'm praying and uh, it was just a beautiful time now today today as we look at Joshua as I mentioned specifically Joshua 3 this is an important part of the story of the Israelites because they also encounter the Jordan River and their story is one that we will never forget. So to set the stage we have to remember that Moses has died, that Joshua is now the leader of the Israelites which is about 40,000 men, just men alone, from the tribes of Reuben, Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. Now, this 40,000 men doesn't include all of the women and children that were part of this group. So this is a really big group that is following Joshua. Now, they have been wandering in the desert for 40 years, and it's time now to cross over. Uh, Joshua had sent in um, spies into the Promised Land to kind of get a lay of the land and what they could do. Um, what was their promises? What were they going to be getting? And it was like lots of territory and lots of wonderful fruits and vegetables and also some other tribes that they were going to have to overcome. Some of these tribes were bigger men, bigger people. And uh, some people came back and they were afraid. And finally, finally, they all decided that, yes, they want to cross over. They want to take uh, every promise that the Lord was giving them. And to do that, they would need to cross over the Jordan River. So Joshua had followed God's special instructions, and he told the priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant and begin walking into the Jordan River. 
Now, why is this a big deal? Because the Jordan River didn't look like this. This was uh, springtime and the river was at flood, flood stage. So the people had been sitting by a river that looked like this for three days, wondering how they were going to get across it. Now, have you ever done that? Have you ever been sitting alongside of your problem and, and just looking at it and saying, there is no way that I'm going to be able to get across. There is no way that I'm going to be able to overcome this obstacle in front of me. There is no way, um, and I've looked at it from every single different angle, that I'm going to be able to do this. And you rack your brain and you make graphs and charts and there is nothing. But God didn't tell um, Joshua to have the engineers go and go across the river first so that they could map their way out and, and look at the best place to cross and, and, and figure out the right angle and, and all of that. Joshua had the priests and the Ark of the Covenant go before the people. And, and that's what we have to remember. God instructed Joshua to have a distance between the priests and the people of about 2,000 cubits, which is actually about 3,000 feet. So the people could see the Lord going before them. Now you got to get the visual, right? There is 40,000 men, not including women and children, sitting along the Jordan River. And so there's all of these people, which is why it was so important for every single one of them to be able to look far enough ahead to see who was crossing over, who was going before them, which was God. Now, if you're, if you're thinking about it, maybe you're wondering that this story sounds familiar. So if we go back 40 years, we have the same people standing before the Red Sea, wondering how they are going to escape Pharaoh and his army. It's the exact same scenario, right? God has brought them right back around to the same place. And now they're standing before this river at flood stage and they're wondering how in the world are they going to cross it? And just like um, Moses did when he was standing down and he raised his staff and, and all of a sudden, you know, God parted the Red Sea and what they crossed over was not this mushy, you know, seabed, but it was actually dry ground. This is what the Lord is going to do again. This is what God is going to show them again at the Jordan River. And so the priests went before, they stood at the riverbank and it's at flood stage and everything's moving so quickly. And, you know, they have the Ark of the Covenant and they step down into the river. And this is what Joshua chapter three, verse 15 says. Get as soon now, sorry. Now Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabath, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the ark and the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and they stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Amen. What are some things that we can take away from Joshua 3? What are some ways that we can look at our life and, and 
set that aside and side by side and look at what the Israelites, you know, went through and, and now what they're stepping into. You got to remember, they have been wandering around for 40 years in a desert and, you know, they left their life in Egypt uh, where even though they were slaves, it was comfortable as far as they knew what to expect. There, there was nothing unknown. There was nothing that surprised them. They just lived day out, day in as slaves, you know, providing, making bricks for the people of, of Egypt and living on hardly nothing and, you know, hoping that one day the Lord would save them. But when the Lord saved them, it made their life unknown. You know, now they're leaving everything they know, their homes, you know, uh, what they're used to. And they're stepping out and following the Lord and he's providing for them every day. And, and they can see him, right? They can see him going ahead of them, um, both in the daytime and at nighttime by, by the, the cloud and by the fire. But, but they're, they're doing everything new. Everything that they're going through is brand new to them. And so many times they want to go back, even though they're slaves, they want to go back to what is familiar to them and, and, and what they know. I think for a lot of us, uh, when we ask God to save us, when we ask God to intervene and come and help us, you know, we want that to be on our terms. We want God to fix our situation and fix our problem, but we want to do it so that we can stay safe and familiar in our familiar surroundings with everything that we know. And that's just not the way that God works. When we ask him to come in and save us from our situation, we have to be prepared that we are now going to follow God wherever he takes us into unknown territories and against obstacles that we in our own strength and our own flesh cannot overcome. For the first thing, I, I want us to recognize that it's that first step, right, of trusting God that when we surrender our will and our lives and our situations, that we have to be prepared, that we have to step out in faith. And, and it's scary and it's unknown and the waters are, you know, at flood stage and we're not sure how we're going to cross it. But we need to step out in faith and trust and believe that God will go before us just like he did with the Israelites in the Ark of the Covenant. He is our Emmanuel, God with us. We also have to look at how Jesus made a way um, and with victory over all things, uh, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in the cross. Jesus overcame everything when he died on the cross. Here you have these men and women who have crucified him and think that he's dead and they've, you know, canceled out everything that he had been doing while he was walking among them and working among them and teaching them and healing them. But no, when, when Jesus died on the cross and he came back to life, he, he crossed out and, and canceled everything that they had been trying to do, all the principalities of darkness, what the enemy had, was trying to overcome, and, and he made a way. That's what we have to cling to in our dark situations, that Jesus overcame, and that because what he did on the cross, we have that promise that he can do that same thing in our lives, and he can move and work. We also have to look at that as we keep our eyes on and follow behind our victorious Jesus, that the river of impossibility will dry up. I love how God just shows off in everything that he does. You would think that just because he stopped the, the river waters farther up by that town of Adam, that we're now going to be crossing over into all this muck, right? All of this mushy, you know, watery down, 
muck and we're going to be trudging across that and everything's going to get dirty and we're going to be dragging our stuff through the muck. No. He doesn't just stop the waters. He dries up the riverbed. So you're walking across solid ground. That's what we have to trust and believe. That's what we have to remember that when, when the Lord makes a way for us, he doesn't just go halfway. He doesn't just do part of it. He does all of it. And it's that stepping out in faith and believing that he's going to do all of it in his timing and his, for, his, for his glory is what we have to grab onto. We also have to look at, as we're looking at some takeaways from, from Joshua, we have to ask ourselves, are you trusting in God's word? Are you really believing that when he says, watch what I'm going to do, that you're watching, that you're listening, that you're, that you're paying attention? And, and actually, maybe your disappointments in, in the situation and, and what's happening is that you haven't truly surrendered yet to God's plan. Maybe you're still wandering around in the desert. Maybe the promised land looks too scary and everything that you're in right now is, is familiar and you don't want to leave that spot. And in your flesh, that's where you want to stay. We started off this morning's service with a song and those beginning words were, I count on one thing, the same God who never fails will not fail me now. This morning, are you standing at the bank of this river called life? wondering how you are going to cross. How is God going to be able to help you fix the problems that, that you're in right now? This situation, this hardship, this pandemic, uh, the government that's happening in this world and in our countries. I mean, when you look at every single problem, you're thinking to yourself, there is no way that God is still on the throne. There is no way that this situation is going to be fixed because it just keeps getting worse and there's just more things that keep piling up. And I just, I can't see God right now. I can't see him working and moving. As we look at Joshua 3, you have to remember that those people sitting alongside the bank are just like us. You know, they sat there for three days preparing and getting ready to cross. And they're looking at this torrent of water that is just rushing by them. And they are wondering how they are going to walk across it without being swept away. I think we can wake up every morning and turn on the news and just wonder how in the world are we still standing here? We could easily be swept away every morning with discouragement and waves of depression and, and just this, this overwhelming feeling that we are out of control. And, and we're wondering, where is God? We have to trust Him. We have to be listening. We have to be in God's Word. We have to be preparing our hearts and our minds and sitting along uh, that riverbank and we have to be ready for when he says, I want you to cross now. I'm making a way. I'm going to dry up this river. You're going to cross on dry land. You have to trust me. Or for our moments today when he says, I know there's a pandemic. I know there is government unrest. I know that everywhere you look, there are problems and issues and people that are hurting. And I want you to know that I am still here, that you can still trust me and that I am still in control. We have to know that it is the same God today and yesterday and the day before that was with the Israelites on the bank of that river. 
He is faithful. We just need to trust him and keep stepping out in faith. Amen. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for these words. I thank you for how we can go to your truth, Lord, and, and look at the people that have come before us so many years ago, and we can follow their lead. We can remember that they also were afraid, that they also had doubts, that they also weren't sure of how they were going to cross these obstacles that were in their life. But we can also, Lord, look at these verses and your truth and know that they overcame, that they listened to you, that they were obedient to what you said, and that we too can cross on dry ground. I just pray, Lord, in these moments when we're afraid and we're fearful and we're unsure that we will stand on your promises of truth, that we will rebuke the enemy and cancel out his plans and just keep stepping out in faith. And I just pray for whoever's listening right now, Lord, who's ever standing alongside of that bank and, and unsure that you will just speak to them right now that you will speak to their hearts, that you will wash over them a blanket of your peace and that they will feel your love in a real and tangible way. We thank you for this time. We thank you that we can come together as a community of believers and learn more about you. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you are going to do this week. We love you and we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I want you to be aware of some resources in case you don't know about them. Uh, we do have a prayer wall. You can go to amybauman.com slash prayer wall. It's on the screen. Click on that and you can leave a prayer request. I will I'll be honored to pray for you and, and walk alongside of you as you're struggling. And other people will pray for you also. Also know that there's a morning devotional that comes out every morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on this Facebook page. Um, and there's other posts that happen throughout the day. So if, you, if you're looking for some encouraging words to, to start your day, make sure that you start them here with us. Also, every Tuesday is a live teaching um, called The Chair. And it's just a casual way of uh, midweek looking at things that we're struggling with, giving you some different things to think about. And so there's, there's lots of resources here. Um, we're just so glad that you're here and so glad that, that you can be a part of this community and uh, to help you walk this journey of life. So thanks for, for being here today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.